Hiya guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm now in Jiangye, which is a city just in the middle of the Hersi Corridor in Gansu. Old Silk Road town. It's still got that kind of laid back, wild west feel to it. China's ever-growing high-speed rail network runs through the city now, making it easily accessible when coming from the east. It's a slow-paced city with some nice places to explore. It also felt strangely familiar to me, its city centre and bell tower being modelled on the city I live in, Xi'an. But it is most noted for the surrounding countryside. We'll get to that a little bit later on. First though, here's a little bit of history. So because of its like position and importance in China, it's one of those towns that was founded in the Han Dynasty as, a, as an outpost on the way out of China. Through this thing, I keep mentioning it, the Hersi Corridor. Now what that is, it's, it was, it's an old route that runs through Gansu today. It still kind of forms that, the border of Gansu. It's a very narrow passage out of China, mountains either side. And it was, for a long time, the only real way north out of China, which, you know, is where the Silk Road ran through. Because of that, this town has always been like on that periphery of you know, far western China, near, you know, all of the, historically all of the nomadic tribes who China was permanently at war with. So this place has changed hands so many times. <laughs> so a lot of famous people have connections with this place as well. Um, you know, back to the beginnings, obviously it was uh, Zhang Qian, the kind of the architect of the Silk Road who was sent out by the Emperor Han Wudi to set up these trading posts. There is also a story that Kublai Khan was born here and a little bit later Marco Polo, the Venetian merchant, uh, lived here and he wrote about it in his travels. Um, he lived here for over a year. Well, it's changed a lot since Marco Polo's day. However, in his writings he does provide some information on the temples of Zhang Ye. He states that in these they have an enormous number of idols, both small and great, certain of the latter being a good ten paces in stature, some of them being of wood, others of clay, and others yet of stone. They are all highly polished and then covered with gold. The great idols of which I speak lie at length, and round about them there are other figures of considerable size, as if adoring and paying homage before them. The place Marco Polo was describing was Zhang Ye's Da Fu Se, the Big Buddha Temple, which is still here today. So this is the Big Buddha Temple just behind me in, uh, in Zhang Ye, and it was built in 1098 and it's kind of largely been unrenovated, so it's still a lot of the original woodwork, which is beautiful. Um, not often you see this in China, a lot of things get renovated to the point of kind of, you know, that it's almost a new building. This one's been left very much uh, as is, which is wonderful. Inside, the reason it's such a huge building, by the way, is because it's got the largest reclining Buddha in China inside it. I can't take photos of video in there, but it is spectacular. But actually, there's a, a load of other stuff here as well, which is well worth a look. Uh, the Shanxi Guild Hall from the Qing Dynasty is really, really cool as well. So as the story goes, no one knows if it's really true or not, but uh, Kublai Khan, the great Mongol leader who was also the founder and first emperor of the Chinese Yuan Dynasty, was apparently born in this, maybe not in this building, but certainly in this temple. Um, that's what people say, but again, it's disputed. I like the idea that it's true though. All right, guys, so we're in uh, Ping Shan Hu, Ping Shan Lake, uh, what is known as China's Grand Canyon. It's pretty spectacular. About an hour drive out of Zhang Ye. Okay, so here's the thing. The single most famous thing about Zhang Ye are the Rainbow Mountains, wonderful, multicolored landforms that draw in tourists and photographers from all over the world. And I didn't bother going. 
I'm sure it is great, but going to the countryside, paying a load of money to look at what is essentially the earth and doing that in a mass of people isn't really my kind of thing. I'm very happy I came here to Pingshanhu, however. It is a stunning place and the landscape that, to be honest, I really didn't expect to see in China. It's quite a drive from Jiangya, but it makes a very nice day out. It's a really great hike. Um, it's not that busy. When you get up on the top, there was a lot of people there tour groups and stuff but down here it's a bit more quiet still the occasional tour group shouting through a microphone but you know so apparently there's something of a climb through here a ladder maybe Only in China, when you're in the middle of nowhere in a canyon, could you have a traffic jam. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bit of a mental stair climb out of here. This spot, it's um, just on the border of Gansu in Inner Mongolia just here behind me that is in a Mongolia in fact super dry uh, arid climate so different from you know where I was a few days ago when I was in the south of Gansu it's actually snowing when I uh, <laughs> the day that I left there well I'm about to leave Jiangye now um, I've had the nicest time here you know these smaller cities in China. It's very walkable, the whole city. Um, there's, it's got kind of a nice laid back feel to it. Everyone's super friendly. Found some good bars, didn't film, sorry. Found a, a good local band who were playing, like with a, the singer was like a Mongolian throat singer. Nice guys. Um, yeah, I've had a really good time. Ready to continue on the Silk Road though, uh, heading further west up into the desert. It's been such a great journey so far. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. All the best. Take care and stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.